What's up, people? My name is Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet, and, uh, ho, 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 Threadripper, no, it's not Threadripper. There's, that's on the way. That has a way cooler box. This is a 1400 Ryzen 5 uh, for a contest winner. A very lucky Russell uh, Tech Phenom viewer of my channel won this in a motherboard and some RAM. And uh, before I send it out, because I did have to order it, I thought, hey, you know me, still same old G. But a bit low key. When I get a CPU in the mail, I open it up, and I open it up, and I put it on the test bench, see what it can do. So this is a 1400. This is the same exact bench that I was using uh, the other day with the 1500X. So these should essentially do the same thing. And I'm very interested to know is, uh, you know, can I get this to four gigahertz uh, stably and get a, a 920 cinnamon score? Or is it gonna be a dramatic difference or, you know, as near as makes no difference? So one thing I think right out of the hop here is gonna be different. Yes, this is the Wraith uh, Stealth. And uh, the Spire is what comes with the 1500X. So I'm gonna switch this over, cue an intro, and then we're just going to see if a 1400 does as well as this. Uh, four gigahertz at uh, four, 1.4 volts-ish, and gets about a nine, 920 Cinebench score. And uh, that'll be my video for today. So, you know, a little bit of rise in performance in the wake of Threadripper being launched today and me having to wait like a lowly peasant to get my sample in my hands. So intro time now. <laughs> Nice God, dropped my gallon wrench. Ah, it's Timmy Joe back here with another BIOS. This is the for sure this time cleared UFI UF, yeah, BIOS from ASRock. Uh, as we see here, auto, auto frequencies, auto everything. So that should be fun. So save and changes and exit. We're going to load into Windows and uh, give ourselves a quick little Cinebench run on the stock speeds of the 1400 because I'm interested to see what kind of uh, stuff we can get out of this little chip um, seeing as they like underclock it so bad we got one or two cores hitting uh, 3442 megahertz or 3.4 gigahertz uh, so far oh yeah they've all gotten up that high and our package temperature is 30 degrees celsius which is about ambient temperature in this freaking garage of mine so let's run a little Cinebench uh, I will dance for you whilst we run it real quick here I'll fast forward of course and get a baseline score. All right, enough silliness. Whilst this wraps up, I'm gonna give you some numbers. So um, the 1500X stock with no changes to uh, any settings in the BIOS can get an 815. I got that number back when I used one of these processors, the 1500X in the uh, Atomic PC, which you can check out up here. It's a cool little build I did with a Ryzen system in a uh, 580, RX 580. Uh, and that was with eight gigs of uh, 2400 speed memory. So, holy geez, 686. That is low, considering. So, yeah, if you're getting a 1400, you're definitely gonna wanna see where she overclocks, because that is a significant performance hit. Um, but I have a feeling AMD's just uh, kind of not letting you have what's under the hood just so they can sell it for a little bit less money. So let's go ahead and restart and we'll go into the BIOS and see what we can do to overclock this puppy. We're going to go to 3900 off the hop just to make sure that it does that first. Uh, 3.37, yes. Uh, anything we, else we need to do? Well, we'll enable our XMP profile. Uh, yeah, 2666, um, yeah, sure, and uh, hardware, standard mode, we'll put this to performance mode, gives her a little boost, save changes and exit, hell yeah, I'm going to save changes and exit, well, let's see if she, on well, uh, that voltage, see if she, she does, she does it, should be good, here, Mm. 
did not make it. Oh, we're gonna need more volts. Overclock tweaker 3.8. Uh, we'll do that just in case. Boom! 830. Boom. 3.9 gigahertz on the old computer Matrona machine. The voltages are pretty high, but I mean, like, nothing too crazy. Uh, we got up to 63 degrees Celsius, which is nothing for Ryzen. Everybody freeze. Everybody down on the ground. Fingers crossed, 3.92 gigahertz, uh, 1.4 volts, or just over, uh, and we have a sentiment score of 833. So, 3.9 gigahertz is about as high as you want to go on this thing without an AIO, which kind of leads me to believe it's worth buying the 1500X over the 1400 which is um, interesting because I have a 1700 and as far as I can tell in the Ryzen 7 series uh, to get an 1800X, you know, you're not going to do that much better. You might get 100 megahertz if that. Uh, but I, you know, th th this is kind of disappointing me that it isn't able to hit the 4 gigahertz, uh, you know, on all four cores. Uh, but it's still a four core eight thread CPU uh, getting, you know, pretty much core i7 performance from a few years ago, uh, you know, uh, especially if you overclock it. And uh, I hope Russell Tech Phenom, Phenom Tech, I hope you enjoy your, your CPU, man. I'm going to be sending this out in the mail as soon as I can get uh, a package together and send it out. So you should see it by next week. But uh, yeah, 1400 and 1500X, I would definitely go with the 1500X, if it's available to you and it's only 20 or $30 more, you get a better uh, cooler out of the box, you get uh, you know a little bit more overclocking headroom and some just better performance out of the box. The out of the box like stock performance is quite a bit uh, better by about 150 points in Cinebench. So uh, yeah, looks like 833 uh, total when we can get about 900 with uh, its bigger brother, the 1500X. But uh, I'm Matt Watch Timmy, join Instagram and Twitter. This was a little experiment to see just uh, what the difference is between a 1400 and a 1500X in the Ryzen 5 range. And I hadn't yet got to play with the low end of CPUs. So uh, I think that this might be like the exception to the rule. Most of the uh, Ryzen systems uh, do pretty well with overclocking and they don't really vary, uh, you know, from the uh, 15 to the 16 to the 17 to the 18. They can all usually do around four gigahertz. And this is obviously just like the worst of the worst binned chips that, you know, couldn't meet the higher end criteria. And that's why AMD set the bar so low with the stock frequencies and stuff on this, but still has uh, SMT. So, you know, still has eight threads, which is pretty cool over a uh, Ryzen 3. So um, I hope you enjoy this. I'll see you guys in another video. Uh, I'm just waiting for Threadripper to show up at my door. Unfortunately, I'm going to have the processor well before I have a freaking motherboard for it. So I'll talk to you in a couple videos from now with Threadripper and we'll see if I can't clean this desk up and do something cool for the next video.